Hello everyone, so there's some exciting features, new updates and bug fixes in the new version of H2O Droplet Simulation. So let me show you how to install it real quick and how to use it. Open up Blender, go to Edit, Preferences and File Paths. So you're going to click plus here. Now when you download the file, you're going to extract it and select the extracted folder over here. Click Add Asset Library. Then it will take you right here to nothing, but then you're going to click it again and that's it. And save your preferences. Now let's add an object to work with. Let's go to Asset Browser, and right here you can find H2O Droplet Simulation. First of all, we have the simple H2O. This is the main thing. You can use it for condensations on fruits or drinks, stuff like that. Anything you want to do. And this one is H2O Curves, which lets you select a vertex group in your object and use that as the path for a droplet. You can now choose a vertex group in a character, like a path that starts from a character's eye down to its neck and then you can use it for animating a teardrop. First of all, let's check the H2O simple main version. So if we just drag and drop this on top of the object, this is what we get. And if I play the report, it's already animated. Now, before we go into these settings, I'm going to show you how to get the trail right. So I've already set up the trail attributes for you guys. Now, if you have a material on the object, just like that, you can add in a group here, which will be named as water track. If you preview the track here, and go to the material preview you can see this is the water track that you can use in your roughness to get the shiny look that a droplet leaves behind now there's a final version which is a little bit of noise too and there's a basic version that you can multiply with or add to your existing roughness maps or you can just connect the final to the roughness now as you can see this is what i'm talking about let me explain these settings real quick First of all is the viewport performance. See sometimes you have huge scenes and you just want to work fluently in them without worrying about the viewport performance. So just turn this on for the viewport only. You're going to turn it off for renders, okay? So turn it on and it will give you a very simple look of the H2O. Then we have deforming mesh. Now, first of all, what is deforming mesh? If you animate this object like that and keyframe it, it is not deforming, okay? Or if you scale it, it's not deforming. But if you give it a modifier like a displace modifier or an armature is controlling it or a shape key, shape keys are deforming too. Or something like moving in edit mode is called deforming. So if it's doing any of those things, it is a deforming mesh and you have to select a UV map that you have in your object. So go to the UV maps right here, copy the name of it, just get the name and paste it right here. So make sure to choose the UV map. Then we have global scale which scales everything up all the elements at once and then we have a noise factor if i bring it up now you can see if i bring down my noise scale this is just like a noise scaling for the thing like a randomness and this is the noise that we get and then we have a vertex group option let's say if i want to add the droplets on a certain area of the object i can go to the edit mode select that area and create a new vertex group and assign it now I'm going to go to the vertex group right here, click this button and select our group right there. There we go. You have to keep in mind that animated auto option is not for deforming meshes. You cannot use it for animated characters. So see if you have like an animated character in one dropless on it, you can use H2O curves plus all these other medium and tiny droplets. You have to turn this one off and click this button as well and use a UE map. Then we have the simple button with no text it says it all you just turn it off and the droplets will be gone the ones that are animated okay and we have the scale for it and when you hit the backspace button on any of these they will go to the default value then we have a density distance minimum distance minimum are used for for moving intersecting distributions then we have density slash vertex group now what you can do is you can bring this down and play with the density but you can also select a vertex group for the ones that are animated. Sometimes you don't want the animated droplets on all of the objects and you want them on the front only for example. So I selected that in a group and I already have my old group so I'm going to select the group there. And the animated ones are only going to be here now. I just increased density to show you what it looks like. Then we have the seed which is randomness start frame end frame you know this we have speed and speed w so when a droplet is sliding down it stops and then it uh, gets the velocity at the end and it becomes faster so when it's uh, a lot higher the droplet will be more frequently stopping and then starting then we have the snake-like motion which is very weird but 
if you increase this value more than that, the droplet will go like a snake in a random path. Then you have droplet mesh, but you can also choose your own meshes now. We have trail width, which is the trail behind the droplets. So if I change the trail width, this is what happens. Then we have the medium droplets. If I turn it off and on, these are the me medium ones. Let's bring up the scale a little bit and bring up the density. So these are the medium droplets. You can play with the density, distance minimum, and delete nearby tiny. So if I bring it down to zero, you can see this one, if you focus on this droplet right here, this one is tiny, and this is the medium one. So if I increase this value, it will delete the tiny droplet beside it, and it will not intersect. So it looks natural. Then we have the scale, simple stuff there, seed, and a turn off and on for the tiny ones but you can also bring up the distance minimum for the tiny ones to make them look natural and not intersecting. Now they won't intersect and you can bring up the density as much as you want. I've set it to 300 and you have the object for it too. So if you want to apply this modifier, you can click realize instances and control A to apply the modifier. But the drop one and the drop dot zero zero one objects. So this is like a droplet creator. So if I import it to my scene and if I focus on this, it will give you a lot of different models of uh, droplets. So you can use them right there. The W gives you a random droplet and the size is just the size of it. And the Z scale is the Z scale. That's just it. So you can use this for creating your droplet meshes. So I think that was it for the simple setup. Now next up is our H2O curves which is a new feature and I'm going to show you how to create like teardrops with it. So if I drag and drop it on my object, you can see nothing happens, but don't worry, it's a little bit hidden. First of all, we have the subdivide mesh. So sometimes your object is not that high poly and you need to subdivide it or, or add more vertices in order for the track to work, the reference track. So if your mesh cannot be subdivided this way, you can Ignore this and have more dense geometry before applying this setup. So you can set up your geometry to be dense like this. And then you can ignore this and animate. Now, before we animate it, I just want to show you where to get the droplets now. So first of all, you must have two vertex groups named as one and two. This is one and two. Okay. Do not name them as anything else because right here you can see I have an attribute called one and this has to be one in the vertex group as well. And then I have an attribute called two. So they must be named as one and two. Now let me show you how to pick your droplet track. So let's see, I want my droplets to go like this. First of all, select this drop, then hold control, select this one, then that one. So this is my droplet track. And on the first group, I'm gonna click assign. Now you can see I have already got this droplet and I can animate it from here. But you can see the track right here is a little bit like not too smooth and the track smoothing works like that. So I have a vertex group and if I bring up the track smoothing, you can see it's very smooth and it will go in that motion. And what if your droplet is facing the wrong way? So then you need to go to the second group and assign that path to the second group right there named S2. Then it will be inverted. But if it's not inverted, you don't need to use the two here. So let's see, I'm gonna create another path here and they move in a random speed and everything is random, okay? So I'm gonna assign it to the first one and you can see it is inverted. So don't click anything else and make sure these vertices are selected and you're gonna go to the second group and assign there. Now that will invert it. And also make sure the curves you create right here, it should have one ending and one starting. So it starts like that, then it ends here, and then it starts again. You don't want to do that. You must not select this other edge there. It has to be one start and one end. And you can animate the values. Just like that. You have track smoothing. You have randomness factor, which is just randomness and random seed as well for the animation. And show track mesh. It just shows the track that you're using, but turn it off in the render, okay? Now, same thing goes for this one as well. If you go to the material preview, the water track node has a blur as well, so you can blur the track. 
and I'm going to bring down the track width so it fits my droplet and just bring down the blur, bring down the width a little bit just like that it works and the track works as well now if you want to apply the main H2O after this you can do that too you can just get that and drag and drop but make sure it is after this one and not before it so it will work fine so that is the first one now we need to tweak the track first just like that go to the shading give it some blur as well there we go and the second track is already working but if your mesh is like a character uh, if you want to create tears and also some droplets on the face you must not check this one because this part of H2O does not work with animated characters and that was the only reason I did the H2O curves I added it so that you can use it for animated characters and once you're using H2O curves you don't need this one mostly you don't need that that was it for H2O. I'm going to link to my Discord server for any help that you want with this add-on. I'm always there to support you and 